Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This is episode two of my Practical Logic series on pulse limiters, which are also known as pulsers, pulse switches, or buttons, if you will. So I have quite a few different designs. They each do similar but different functions and have their own uses depending on your circuit. Um, now ultimately, you could probably get away with using a single pulse limiter and just invert the signal with a knot anytime you needed to, but that adds bloat. And the goal of practical logic is to make things as small as possible. So you have all these you see before me, and I will go over them one by one and show you how to build them. Alright, so the pulses on the left are manual reset pulses, and, you know, they're not useful for buttons because they have to be manually reset so they're better when used inside of a circuit that you know it's a uh, stable state um, such as like an RS NOR latch and that way you can remove the activators and save yourself some space which I will demonstrate over here so um, these don't have any activators but they send a pulse each time the state has changed. So that's that's the use of uh, manual pulse limiters. Now the automatics will just toggle, do their pulse each time they're toggled and do not need to be reset before they function again. They will do that automatically. Now to show you how to build these I'm going to start from the left and work my way right. Now on the far left is the inverted pulse limiters they take the signal in and invert it before sending a pulse out. So this one will say it take a low in and pulse out high. So as you can see, I needed to reset it and then pulse it again, and then reset it, and then pulse. And you can see that it's high, but the pulse is low. Now these are built identically, just with an AND or an OR. Um, giving you your specific pulse. So you take an activator, a knot, a delay, and the AND, and let's just, for good measure, add the OR. So I, you can also connect these two and have it do double duty. So the activator gets wired into both the knot and the delay, and then these both get wired into the AND or the OR so the knot and the delay into the end of the circuit. So flip it up and you'll see it pulsed high and then pulsed low. So that's how you can um, have it do both pulses. So this technically isn't manual reset if you actually have an input that you need to pulse high and low um, when it switches. And then next up is the direct. This pulses uh, the same as the signal in. So a high in will pulse a high out, and they are also inverted uh, and or or. So I personally, I build them uh, identically. Um, might be confusing for you, so you, you can choose your layout any way you want it doesn't matter. Um, it just matters how you connect them. So this one is the delay, the activator or your input into the knot and the end and then the knot goes into the delay and then the delay into the the end of the chain being a and or an or. So now this will pulse high pulse on high input and low pulse on low input. Now these only have one input, this or the circuit, and one output being the end of the chain here. So, yeah, like I said, uh, how you build it isn't important. The only thing that's really important is the, the, sh the connections. Like that. And then 
if you want to turn this one into a um, automatic reset, you just take the back in, which I don't think this will work because it's... Yeah, that just turns it into a clock. It's um, has to be one or the other. See, now you can see it automatically resets. And then it would be the same for... So, activator into the knot, as well as the end component. Knot into the delay, delay into the end. And then you have to take the end and feed it back into the start. And you got a pulse. Now, the great thing about these is this is your input, but they also have multiple outputs. You can Im uh, output a invert inverted uh, signal, such as these would give you from the knot, because it automatically resets. You know exactly how long the pulse of the knot will be. These ones will have a long pulse. You know, it's not really a pulse. It's when it's reset, so you can't actually output from the knot here uh, effectively. But on this one, you can output from the knot, the delay, the end, and you can also output from the activator. Uh, most of the times when I'm using these, I will input and output from the activator itself. And the delay, outputting from the delay, will also give you a falling edge um, so that will only pulse when this circuit turns off. The falling edge is uh, the off when the circuit goes from all its on state to its off state. So this one has a low pulse on the falling edge, and this one has a high pulse on the falling edge. So I can actually demonst uh, demonstrate that by taking that and that. So now you'll see the falling edge that block there toggles. Another thing you can do to create falling edges is linking these two circuits together. So now when I toggle this one, this one will toggle on the falling edge. Just like that. And it works both ways. As long as you don't make a, uh, a chain, because then you'll just get a get a clock, which is not what you want. Next up, you have what I'm calling a dual state pulse limiter. I'm not sure if it has a more official name, but it just emits a pulse every time the state is changed. So these are actually two of these combined, and this one is these two combined, or, yeah, just combined and trimmed. Fairly easy to build as well. So you have your activator, goes into a knot and a delay, and it just kind of all has like a wave down the chain. The knot goes into a delay as well, and your AND or your OR, depending on what pulse you want, and, uh, OR is a low pulse and is a high pulse. So let's do a high pulse. So that goes into an AND there, this delay goes into an AND as well, and then this delay goes into that AND on the left, and the activator also goes into the AND on the right. So now you should have two pulses each time the state is changed, and all you have to do is connect them um, with the opposite of what it is. So if you use the ands, you want to connect them both to an or. And if you use the or, you want to connect them both to the and. Like so. So um, that's that. It's really easy. Um, when I release this, I'm going to strip out the section I added here to do the how-tos, but it's this will be included, and you can check out the connections and everything on how to build these. Oh, I don't know if that's loud in the video, but it's loud in my head. Um, back here I have a demonstration stating uh, just the length of a pulse can be determined by the delay chain. Uh, longer delay chains are not recommended 
because they also take time to reset. So, uh, you... <laughs> it's just bad. You can't... If the circuit is being reset, you can't turn uh, toggle it again. And uh, another demonstration of the falling edge is... I have this door open on the falling edge, so it's wired up to the end of the delay chain here. And that's very useful because you can have a... You've clicked the button and it doesn't open right away, so you have time to react between clicking the button and then the door opening for you to pass through. And then additionally I have over here is this space saver tip. Um, not spam safe though. You can take a single pulse limiter. This is um, a self-resetting one, or not self-resetting, uh, manual reset, sort of. But the, the signal goes into and resets the activator back here, so it's uh, it, it does reset itself, and you can get pulses from any location. Just the problem is if you um, pulse too quickly, it'll turn off the second one uh, immediately, and if you pulse within half a second, you'll freeze the system. Um, over here I have an extra set of circuits on how to avoid freezing the system but it uh, still has the uh, same problem as uh, the quick off but it's just a way to compress circuitry if you have a lot of inputs going into a single circuit but uh, it's just people need to learn to not spam inputs. Uh, anytime you ha in introduce a delay into your circuit, chances are the circuit's not going to be spam safe. Um, and I utilize this uh, quite a bit down here. Uh, all my airlocks have multiple inputs. Uh, it's a more compl complex airlock system I've been working on, have multiple inputs. And those are all my airlock circuits, and my airlocks have gotten rather small due to the use of multiple inputs. So the, uh, the original design took up quite a bit of space, but made it nice and compact now. And I think that about covers it for pulses for today. Hopefully I won't absolutely hate this video when I put it together, which I did on the last time I recorded this. Well, uh, Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. See you next time.